Shopify helped businesses break sales records over the holidays with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. Everybody goes through a different experience, but for me, I start picking up these things and uh, feelings and thoughts. By the second or third day, I could no longer imagine what normal life was like. It's 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 almost like I didn't have uh, I d- I didn't know where the off switch was. Gary Wimmer is a professional psychic, forty some years experience doing this, and I've talked with him before. But I wanted to get back because right now things are hopping, things are changing, people are experiencing um, more actually of their own psychic phenomena some people didn't even know it was possible and all of a sudden it's like what's happening and i was on a a forum recently on facebook and since everybody there deals with ets of course their answer was all right you're having an et experience and that may not be the case so i wanted gary to come on and, and talk about some of this because he had an extraordinary experience in 1977 following a big huge psychic overwhelm so gary gary it's good to to touch base and and talk with you again uh great to be with you wendy I wanted you to give us a backstory real quick. What happened in 1977? Well, I started studying psychic ability way back in the 60s, reading Edgar Casey. I moved to Austin in 1970, and a couple different astrologers told me I had a lot of natural psychic ability. Uh, I was a musician. I've been a musician my whole life. I chose to do that rather than be an electrical engineer because it seemed like more fun. And in 1970, it was all defense work, and I was a war protester. So I started developing my psychic ability along with being a musician. In 1977, uh, out of the clear blue, I started going through an intense change. Within 24 hours, my psychic ability had kicked off to the point of uh, it scared the hell out of me. I started picking up things of strangers, thoughts. I could read my the headline of a newspaper through my roommate's eyes. I could start pro- projecting things that were about to happen. I could call the shots on a pool game happening behind me, five shots in advance. And this built up to a point of intensity that I've never felt so scared and so enlightened at the same time. Long story short, at the end of that week, I was involved in a head-on collision with a speeding car. Uh, I was a pedestrian. I should have gotten killed. I didn't even feel it. didn't even get hurt. And between the time the my body hit the car and I landed back out on the street again in front of a bunch of screaming witnesses, between that two seconds of earth time, I felt like I was gone for infinity. I left my body. I saw my body getting banged up by the car. And then I started expanding outwards like a balloon in all directions, not like an arrow going one direction. And, of course, this is my psychic spiritual side. My body's laying down in Guadalupe Street in Austin. But as I expanded, I saw the whole Earth from 360 degrees, the planets. I started expanding to the edge of the universe, went beyond it. Long story short, went through this tunnel of light that people describe. It's a pretty good uh, description. And then I felt like I was in infinite blue sky, a feeling of peace that's just unbelievable. I was at, at the core of the mind of God. And I felt like I was part of it. Not necessarily a witness. Well, that all changed when a term I called spiritual gravity pulled me away from it, as if I'd been witnessing it rather than being a part of it. I went back to this tunnel of light. I started coming back into this realm of time and space. I had no idea who I was. I completely forgot that once I left my body. I was a little bit apprehensive about coming back into wherever I was headed, but I had no choice. Uh, Spiritual gravity was pulling me. I got closer and closer to this galaxy, to this uh, solar system, and to Earth, and felt a sense of familiarity. Uh, But that was about it, a sense of familiarity. But as I saw my body on the concrete and people screaming and hollering, I saw, before I hopped into my body, I saw a whole bunch of flashcards. And these were the premonitions I'd seen about the next hundred years on our planet. I still wasn't quite aware that it was me that was witnessing this or had left my body or whatever. 
But the next series of images had to do with me, a musician, a psychic, playing music, traveling around. And at that point, I realized, wow, this was me. And then I saw my body and jumped back into my body. And there was a bunch of screaming witnesses. The driver was terrified. Traffic had stopped. People were horrified. I didn't feel a thing. I'd just been to heaven and back. I just jumped to my feet and started talking to people. And boy, you speak of a freaked out scene. They, cops, ambulance, long story. That's all included in a book I wrote called The Second in Eternity. But in direct response to your curiosity and your question, when I came back, I saw all these flashcards. Uh, and they were pretty uh, challenging about the human race over the next hundred years, both uh, economically, politically, socially. Geographically, I saw a lot of earth changes. I saw the Mississippi becoming quite wide. I saw the north and uh, the west coast and the east coast getting somewhat narrower. I don't think this is next week, but I think it's in the next 50 to 100 years. I can't guarantee it. But on 9 11, I was in Europe. I was playing on a cruise ship, and a Swedish man who'd been listening to me told me he thought. The uh, World Trade Center had been hit by terrorists. I ran down into the crew room, looked on TV as that second plane came through, and I realized I had seen that exact picture 24 years earlier. And this is about the third or fourth confirmation of a lot of these pictures I'd seen had were coming into play. So I was one of those lucky people who saw this intense change we're going through. Uh, you can call it a Armageddon, the second coming, the age of Aquarius, the age of enlightenment, whatever. But it's a shift of consciousness that the whole planet is fortunate enough to go through because we can, we have to get, uh, we have to fix the holes in our, our boat, the flaws in ourselves and in our systems to survive. And we're getting to see them all through all this, uh, you know, social upheaval, dysfunctionality. We have to, we, we have to re, um, reformat our whole systems you know they're out of date so in spite of how challenging it is it makes sense to me i'm still in the blender like everybody else whether it's the economy or the war or whatever we're all affected by it but i encourage everybody to look beyond the fact that we're finding the holes in the boat to realize that good by finding them we can fix them i'm a total optimist in spite of all the intensity and changes but um, certain things happen to ha have to happen have to come into play for mankind to take the next huge step toward a more peaceful enlightened progressive humanitarian evolved world uh that's my short answer that makes sense to you my dear i know it does absolutely absolutely i, I want to re refresh anybody who's listening a Second in Eternity is the book available through anywhere and then your website, GaryWimmer.com. All right, back to you saw flashcards of the future and premonitions. Was the nuclear aspect related in there in any way, shape, or form? I can't say I saw nuclear war and weapons blowing up everywhere in the country. I saw a lot of skirmishes. But I saw these flashcards so quickly that oftentimes I'm reminded when the incident happens, oh, this is a flashcard. I saw this earlier. Uh, because it seemed like they happened so fast. I But I don't remember seeing them with nuclear war. I, I can't say that won't happen. I mean, who knows? We got Putin, and he's desperate. He might just pull that plug and start it. But, uh, you know, that'll be the end of Russia. Do the uh, other folks you talk to talk about nuclear war? Some of the experiencers say that they've had, you know, uh, a, a glimpse or an image of those kinds of things. They don't say it's an end. It's basically more of an inconvenience, and then we're going to have to deal with the fallout. That's kind of what I think at worst case uh, inconvenience. I don't think uh, anybody is in their right mind would start a big nuclear war. It'd be their own, you know, yeah. nuclear destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even if I think Putin ordered it, that his generals might have the uh, intense the intelligence to stop at some point. I think our main challenge is ourselves. It's making a society where everybody can breathe and have fresh water and have decent health care and fairness and uh, the the power distribution, the economic, the political distribution of power and wealth is absurd. It's totally absurd. So 
such extremes, and that has to be ironed out. In, in terms of people who are asking questions, I have seen more and more people who are having spontaneous awakenings, spontaneous third eye activation, and experiencing what you had at the beginning when you said you were overwhelmed. So I kind of wanted you to address that. What was it like to be able to, you know, know what the pool table was going to, the action the, was going to happen five moves in advance and know what seeing through someone else's eyes. This isn't something I, I it's, it's uh, right now people are grasping at straws because there isn't a lot of education as there should have been about what happens when your life changes like this and not to be afraid of it. Well, yeah, a a do not be afraid of it. I mean, I went through such fear, so it's so uh, there's not a button on our head we push to to conquer fear immediately. It's a process and a decision and a challenge. But uh, what happened to me? Um, I can't say everybody everybody goes through a different experience, but for me, I start picking up these things and uh, feelings and thoughts. By the second or third day, I could no longer imagine what normal life was like. It's 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 almost like I didn't have uh, I d- I didn't know where the off switch was. wasn't quite sure what was happening or why. Of course, later I did very clearly after I had the near death experience. But prior to that, it just seemed to come on and almost be like uh, the new norm. You know, it was the okay. I can't press a reset button. I don't know what reset button there is. I don't know why this is coming on. And yeah, I went through a lot of fear and doubt, but also I was fascinated. I was amazingly fascinated. Wow, I've got this mystical power that just blows my mind, blows everybody's mind around me. So it was a um, kind of a yin and yang. And I, the reason I say that is at the start of this broadcast, at the start of the session, we were talking about the extremes in society. And at the same time, the massive enlightenment, which you brought up a second ago, uh, things happen in extremes. Things happen yin and yang. The more extreme it gets in one level, the more extreme it can go in the other level. So, uh, and in a way, that's kind of what I felt like I was going through. Uh, I didn't know there was an off button. I didn't know what was happening. It was fascinating. I think my roommates and friends realized I was going through some sort of um, emotional crisis or something. But from my side, it was a, a um, opening of the door into a psychic world that uh, I did not know why this was uh, happening all of a sudden. Uh, but I felt somewhat comfortable with it because it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. And to everybody who goes through challenges in life, whether it's a psychic experience or the loss of another one, uh, remember, we all go through fear. We all go through doubt. But if you never went through fear, you could never become fearless. And if you never went through doubt, you'd never look for certainty. Uh, When we go through changes, it's usually life trying to show us something we didn't know we needed to know. We know what we want. We know what we've been. We know what we'd like. We don't always know what uh, life wants us to learn or what we came here to learn. And because... We brought free will. We can change gears at any time. You know, we can change situations. But we all came here for one purpose, to manifest to the best of our ability, infinite mind. And yes, we get to choose whether we're going to be good people or bad people. There ain't no accidents. Uh, My experience was no accident. I was wondering about it for a while, but after I came back from my body, I fell back from my experience and jumped into my body. I clearly realized what had happened to me, where I'd been. I didn't expect anybody to believe it. Uh, But what was fascinating to me is I did not know why I had this experience. I was so grateful to God and the universe and my higher mind and the guardian angels I refer to in the book as monitors. I felt so grateful because, uh, indeed, there is one infinite mind, and it's just beyond human comprehension. Uh, But we humans can tap into it. So I was extremely grateful that experience, but I didn't know what ha- why it happened, why I got it. And eight months later, after many, many times of asking my guides, why did I get this? They answered me. And they came one day about eight months later. I didn't see them this time. I felt them. And they basically said, 
you wanted this your whole life. You always wanted to know the truth. You always asked questions. You pride. Uh, so we took you. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. You got the ride because your curiosity and uh, brought you to that spot. So ask and you shall receive, folks. The other Never question, you mentioned your guides. You mentioned your guides. And that was no. part of the thing um, with the guides prior to the NDE you were overwhelmed with the psychic experience and what did you, because this basically you called to them to get you out of that. I did. I felt after about the second or third day of this intense, intense change where life was no longer normal. I mean, it had just 24 hours shifted to a whole different level. Uh, but I did feel some sort of, I called them the monitors because they felt like they named themselves that way. I felt something monitoring me, and it's almost like that said they said, "Yeah, that's fine. Call us the monitors." And there was a us. It was several of them. Yes, right. And I felt like they were taking shifts. They were watching me. They were protecting <laughs> me. I didn't see them, you know, but I could feel them. The only one time I saw them was right before I uh, was hit by the car. They basically appeared above my head a physical distance, and asked me if I trusted him. And I said, well, absolutely. I've been asking what's going on, and you people are talking to me, and you're the monitors, and I don't understand. Said, Do you trust us? That was a real simple question. I said yes, and within seconds when I was hit by that speeding car, I realized, wow, yeah. that was nice. Because now I'm outside my body getting to see things that few human beings get to see. Yeah. But... You're right. More and more people are seeing that now because that's the next step in our collective and personal consciousness, shift of consciousness. It's a good thing people are seeing that. A good thing people are turning on. Good thing people are asking questions. Good thing we're going through changes. Nothing's worse than stagnant water. Well, again, though, it's for, for some people, it's overwhelming and there are no resources collective resources that you can you know, you can do google and find all sorts of stuff but right now we're still at this stage where we're in between and there's still this um i think adversarial outlook that there's no such thing as a psychic there's no such thing as a premonition there's no such thing this well a bigfoot or of fairies or aliens or ets and that part right now i think these these are the challenges the little speed bumps that we're having to address getting to that next level of yes telepathy is natural everybody has that ability. absolutely yeah. absolutely and we're having to learn more and more about it because with a, with a higher consciousness and more psychic ability and more spiritual ability will make a better world. I suggest this to people who get uh, nervous, freaked out, whatever, curious, wondering what to do, what's happening. The number one resource you have, everybody has, is your connection to infinite mind. And if you practice that and believe in that and ask infinite mind to help you, ask your guides to help you very directly, because our guides and our higher mind and our guardian angels, whatever you want to call it, God, Allah, whatever, they all abide by the rule. And the rule is they, they do have the power, but they do not have the, the uh, right to interfere with human free will. If you want to believe the earth is square and Hitler was a good guy, go to town. You're wrong. <laughs> uh. But we have free will, so we get to decide. And that same free will can be turned into empowerment versus fear. you got to practice it just like you do driving or sex or typing or golf, whatever you do. Everybody has the power to raise their consciousness, to tap into higher mind, to meditate, meditate, meditate. Turn off your mind for 10 minutes a day. And when people meditate, the people who who enjoy meditation, the only difference between them and the people who don't meditate or don't know how to is they practice. Lay down, sit down, breathe deep. You feel your mind wandering. Bring it gently back to the simplicity of laying down, sitting down, breathing deep. Because if you can learn to just turn your mind off at your will, good. The, The TV's great. The computer's great. Sometimes you have to turn it off, though, you know. So the real power of becoming fearless, you have it. We all have it. We just have to practice it. And your guides will help you. But they will, they, 
they can nudge you several times during your life, but they can't really push you much because they'll be breaking into your free will. However, if you ask them to participate and help you, boy, they'll come with, uh, you know, tools and kits and more than you can even imagine help. But you have to ask and you have to practice being at peace. Practice makes perfect. So to everybody who's got fear and doubt and confusion, well, welcome to the human race. We all go through it. But we don't have to stay there. Psychic Gary Wimmer, GaryWimmer.com. The number one resource you have, everybody has, is your connection to infinite mind. Gary Wimmer. The difference between when you're saying shut the mind down, just meditate, open, you know, clear your mind, that helps because then you understand when you start running that old tape, that old program, telling yourself all sorts of things, I can't do this, I shouldn't do that, blah, 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 or so-and-so has a better car, I need a better house. You can shut that out to be able to hear your guides saying, turn left. Absolutely. Absolutely. And never shortchange yourself on how great you are, how beautiful you are, how much of a uh, power you have. But that's a choice to focus on that because in life, it, it's our, not our situation. There's no two situations alike, but it's the way we look at it. It's always the way you look at it. You could have everything in your life working and be miserable, or you could just barely escape with your life in Maripol, Ukraine, and be grateful to the universe for eternity. Completely different situations, all how we look at it. So I encourage everybody with fear and doubt, which is every human being who's ever been here, it's conquerable. It's temporary. You don't have to stay in that lane, but you do have to practice getting out of that lane. And once you start practicing it, just like piano or driving, it can become second nature. What did you learn when you heard other people's thoughts? I think I, it's, it, I learned a lot about other people in some sort of way, but it's because we're all different, we're all unique. But what I learned is that this all thoughts, well, everything spreads through the universe of, of infinite mind, you know, faster than the speed of light. Everything is connected. Every molecule, every atom. I think that's the main thing when I saw infinite mind, I was mind boggled. Infinite creativity permeates everything. And that it comes in through the quantum level, the smallest interface of space and time. That's how consciousness enters. But what I experienced by picking up all these thoughts was that it is um, that people can do that, that it can happen. Uh, I didn't particularly want to be a wash in them, but obviously through my desire or my guides helping me through this process, it was something that uh, that I was meant to learn, so I could tell other people, hey. This power is available. Now, I'm not saying you want to go around and pick up other people's thoughts all the time. Uh, <laughs> probably because I've already studied psychic ability. That's the that's the card I got to convince me. You uh-huh. know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe if I'd have been a uh, car salesman, I would have sold 50 cars the next day, and it would have proved to me that uh, power. But bottom line, we are all connected to infinite mind. And if we practice it and ask it, and you have to ask and you have to practice. You have no idea how much you can overcome fear or doubt or learn new principles or turn on new powers. Or recreate yourself and help recreate the world. You know, we can't change a second of the past. We really can't change other people. We can affect people. We can influence people. You can't make people realize that the world is round if they want to believe it's square. But uh, it's not about what we can't do. It's always about what we can do, period. And people can overcome their fear and doubt. Everybody goes through it. But again, you don't have to stay there. And it's a choice to practice liberation. It's a choice to ask for help. It's a choice to realize that things in life are not meant to hurt you and confuse you. They're meant to help you grow. But we didn't come with a a curriculum like you would get if you joined the Navy or went for your doctorate degree. You got to study this and then this and this, and then here's why. We didn't come with that sort of strict criteria because we came with free will. We can change it as we go. But the fact that we did come here 
it's not an accident. We came here for reasons. And if we really want to know those and we really want to empower ourselves and make a better world for ourselves and everybody else, it's it's very doable. You just have to practice it, believe in it, and change your strategy. Think of all the great things you can do for yourself and other people. You do readings for people, Lithomancy. And Correct. So what, what, why that? What, what made you choose that, that version? Well, I started, uh, I started studying psychic ability with reading Edgar Casey way back in the late 60s. A couple of astrologers I told you told me that from my astrology chart, I got a lot of natural psychic ability. I moved to Austin in the 70s, uh, and by 1972 or three, I'd been experimenting with readings, doing cards, a little bit of palmistry, a little bit of tarot, uh, but I was also pretty busy, busy playing music. You know, I couldn't make a living on psychic ability. I, well, I didn't make a great living on music, but I could pay the rent. <laughs> you know, I didn't get rich and famous. But in 1980, I met this lady named Alice Worrell. I was going through some problems then, and a friend of mine turned me on to her, and she did a reading with stones. Uh, she also did some palmistry and so forth. She's a, one of the greatest psychics I've ever known. And we became very close friends. I was around her from 1980 till she passed away a couple years ago. But she did this reading with 16 stones, and I was amazed I'd never seen this. And I thought, I like this system. I mean, she's just looking at a bunch of stones. Uh, she had a class about how to teach it. I uh, had to do, uh, excuse me, she gave a class on lithomancy, which is the method. It was pouring rain. I was the only person that showed up. I wasn't sure I was going to go. It was raining so bad. She wasn't sure she was going to go, but she promised people she'd be there at this bookstore. So it was just her and I, and she showed me in about five or ten minutes the way she does it. The next day, I got 16 stones and marked them with and by the way, they're, they, uh, the 16 stones are 10 planet stones, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, and six personal stones. Love, life, uh, magic, commitment, timing, and place. And those 16 stones, if I do it over the phone, people say drop, I drop it for them. If I do it in person, which I haven't been doing much because of COVID, uh, the person drops the stones mm -hmm. into a little um, uh, on a little cloth with a piece of leather about three feet long that I tie a little dot in, make a little circle out of it. So when the stones are dropped, either I drop them or the uh, reader drops them. Excuse me, the client. I read them like a clock from the center up to twelve o'clock and around for twelve weeks. I like the system. I liked it the first day I tried it because I realized, well, I can start to pick stuff up, you know, about people. And like anything, the more you practice your skill, the better you get at it. So I started this in 1980. And I still like this system. It's, it's To me, it's real easy. It's real flexible. I don't have to remember a whole lot. Just know the what the meanings of the uh, stones are. I wrote a book on that called Lithomancy. That's L-I-T-H-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Lithomancy, the psychic art of reading stones. And so if anybody's interested in learning, they can go check out Lithomancy, the psychic art of reading stones. It's basically reading symbolism. And when I lived in Europe all during the 90s, I was a musician playing over there a lot. People, both uh, fellow musicians, friends, and sometimes people in the club, Word got around that I do readings, and several times people asked me for readings, and I said, well, I don't have my stones and my stuff with me. It's out of my other place, because I'd stay at several different locations, depending on where I was playing, if I'm taking a train back to my girlfriend's house, whatever. So several times after making that uh, factual statement, I thought, no, come on upstairs. So I'd bring them up to my environment, and even though I didn't have my stones, I would have people arrange stuff on a table. An ashtray, a guitar string, a, you know, yeah. a trinket, a earring, take stuff out of your purse, whatever. I'm going to go in here and make some tea. I'll be back in two minutes. You lay this stuff on a table, and I'll come back, and I'll just read it. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, 
So I encourage everybody, you can read anything if you set your mind to it and learn and practice, because you got to practice everything. Nobody starts on the piano at noon and by 12, 15, you're perfect. (laughs) You're you're never perfect. But you do get better with practice and with intentions, because intentions are the most important thing in life. Your intentions, that matters. But that's the system. That's how I learned. Sort of just uh, met this lady, and it turned out uh, she told me during reading she'd been my mother twice in past lives. Uh, we developed a very, very close relationship. And even now, she's my guide. When I do readings, I put a this little trinket I put in for her, and it points uh, toward me as I'm doing a reading. I use that as a uh, sort of like a conduit. Just point that stone toward me while I'm doing a reading. It pulls her energy and helps me. And uh, I can actually feel her whisper things to me. Gary Wimmer, in part two, he's going to talk about the precog experience he had, those flashcards. And you can check out the website, GaryWimmer.com. You can get a reading. He does the stones, lithomancy. And I'll put links in the description for the show. You can check out my blog. That's Talking to Nightlights on WordPress. Thanks for listening. Part two coming up.